it is for the cause of the kingdom that marriage is instituted marriage actually has an eternal relevance i get in the point now if it doesn't the devil will not be attacking it so bad like that the bible said it is for this that they come to become one flesh they come to become one one of the prayer that jesus pray is that father let them be one right as we are one let them be married to each other as we are married to each other hasn't it wonder you why we are referred to as the body of christ hasn't it wonder that today all of us are going to be married to jesus at the tail end is that not true if you want if you say you i will not get married on the earth are you going to marry on the last day that is why marriage itself is a rehaza for the marriage on the last day and that is why i'm trying to let you understand that it is actually a spiritual implication relationship is actually none of the business the contest is marriage but the contest of that marriage is actually a symbolic representation of our union with christ on the last day and that is why it's very possible if you fail in that union now you may not be united with him at the tail end that's the truth and by the time you go further you are going to see that in fact one of the reasons why marriage is referred to as a distraction is because it has the ability to limit you from the great marriage that we are supposed to actually get involved with because there is yet again another marriage but that marriage is actually supposed to be on the last day but if you fail in this it has the ability to compromise your life to a point where you cannot be able to make it for that marriage on the last day. and is it not better that you remain unmarried and get married later on than for you to be married and it has the ability to hinder you from that other marriage so it is the job of the man to be able to bring to a point where he can present that woman that god has given to him and that he has vowed to take to ensure that at the tail end she now become a bride unto christ are you with me now are we together because the prayer of jesus is that there has to be a unification there has to be a marriage that these people must have to be that is why we are referred to as a body of christ we are the bride of christ and all of us male female it doesn't matter man woman it doesn't matter it's a preparation for that holy union is that okay so when you look at it you are going to see something the bible said there that you cannot you cannot successfully hate your own flesh if truly you are married to someone and you become one anytime i see married people hate themselves i ask myself the question were they truly one if you are truly one you come into a point of oneness that if the other person is crying you'll be crying do you know you can even attempt that level in a relationship if you are very when i taught you about the stage of relationship you're going to realize that you can literally be in a relationship with somebody and when the person is sick you feel sick you don't want to be sick oh, but when that person is sick automatically you begin to feel sick when that person is angry you are angry not because you want the the power of that union bring you to be a participant of the same pain the person carry then imagine people that are married intercourse with themselves transfer blood all together and yet again they feel that they can actually hate themselves you cannot successfully hate somebody you married it's not possible you will discover that as you are hating the person you are actually also hating yourself why because that common union has brought you to a point where it no matter how you do what affect the person will affect you that's the danger and that's why the bible said you cannot successfully does that so when you nourish the person you nourish yourself when you build the person you build yourself and that is why if you truly are married to somebody you love somebody you cannot think it's a waste of money investing in them it's not possible you cannot think it's a waste taking care of them you can't why because anytime you take care of them you're actually taking care of yourself in fact how many men today you're in a relationship people look at the lady and say eh, you are looking beautiful and they think it's you that is making her look beautiful in fact they think you are the one that gave her money for that hair you are the one that buy her that dress but automatically for the past one year you have bought nothing but you take glory for what doesn't concern you why because of the oneness of this thing 
How many women today in their married home, their husband has never bought a wrapper for them? And they are looking very good. And every time men comp people compliment and say, Hey, your husband is taking good care of you. And she's just like, Yes. Hmm. Yes. Only if only they know. It's a foolish man that is sitting somewhere. How can a man not invest in his own wife? How can you not invest in something you call your own? How? In fact, it goes so worse that we have people today that help other people and neglect the people they call their own. Imagine this kind of thing. How can the person you are married to, how can the person you call your wife, how can the person you call your husband, you have the ability to reject them a privilege and you give it to another person else. Doesn't it tell you something is wrong with the foundation of your understanding and keeping to that union? You have not truly become one. In fact, you are separate entities. We have to be able to evaluate again before we step into these things and put ourselves in a very serious trouble. Another very profound thing there, the Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Have it surprised you that it's actually the man that is leaving his parent? But in our context, doesn't it look as if it's the woman that they pack and loot and go to the mad house? According to biblical standard, there is never a time you read in Bible. I will show you two scriptures. There is never a time that a woman pack her things and go to a man house. It's a man that pack and come to the so you are waiting for us to have a house. We are looking for women that have places we should pack to. It is the man that will leave his father and his mother and go and join himself to a proverb that to one woman. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and part his load. In the real context, it's actually the woman that married the man. It's not the man that married the woman. In fact, do you know in India, it's women that marry men. So a man can say that he's part of his bride price is that he needs a new car. I'm telling you, very terrible culture. Imagine if that's how it happened in Nigeria. We have been married by now. Because all this world are you by giving to us. But I know my friends will not ask for too much. What? He must buy me this. He must buy me that. Actually, you are the one that's supposed to buy us this and buy us that. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother. To come and join to his own wife. Places like Ghana, they have motherland, not fatherland. Because Nigeria is fatherland. And that's the reason why we have made this. Let's convert it to motherland so that let's, we can reduce this problem if the women should marry the men. For this cause. But I want to look at it in a different context. That most times when the scriptures speak about this he always refer it to that the man will have to leave his father his mother and cleave to his own wife the reason being that normally when a man is not married his prime responsibility is to his immediate family are you with me it has nothing to do with motherland and all of that right it's just hilarious when a man is not married his prime responsibility is his family his family so it's possible that because you are not married you should love your father you should love your mother you should love your sisters and your brothers but immediately you are married you must be able to forsake your mother forsake your father forsake your sister forsake your brother and cleave to your wife because in your wife you will find another father another sister another brother one of the greatest problem for divorce is part of what i will consider is what we call third party there are three to four major causes of divorce of course we have infidelity we have he cannot satisfy me she cannot satisfy me all kinds of nonsense that happen then you also have the case of financial crisis right but there is one pivotal one which is third party where you have 
the man is married and yet again the family have not let him go in fact it's so worse that there are some houses that your parent will tell you marry and bring the woman to the house so the woman is no longer his own wife she's the wife of the entire family even your brother your wife is controlling her your own brother your brother is telling your wife you have not greeted me today is there food in this house it goes so worse that some of the brothers even want to sleep with your wife it's because for this cause a man has to leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his own wife i will forever believe never marry and remain in your father's house if you have to go and squat somewhere go and squat not in your parent house you are not qualified to be married you are going to stay in your parent house i don't care whether it's a mansion 